Hello everyone, Delaya here to discuss the guiding documents of student affairs. So essentially the guiding documents of student affairs are multiple statements proposed to guide student affairs practitioners with their work within universities and colleges. Um, each document reflects the era which it was created. We have the first one starting in 1937 and I want to say the last one is from the late 90s. Um, I noticed that throughout each paper that I read, each document maintains the same idea. What can we do to help the most the help the most amount of students? And that seems to be the common theme throughout the papers. Um, each doc document also has its differences. For example, the student personnel point of view from 1937 is a philosophical take on what student affairs practitioners should be doing. Um, it's very philosophical, it's not very specific, it's kind of like the early ideas of what student affairs personnel should be researching, what they should be doing, what their goals should be. And then um, in the Hazen Report from 1968, we see the narrative of higher education um, switch we see it becoming more diverse. We have the civil rights movement heavily impacting um, higher education. We have the economy. We have the, uh, what was it, McCarthyism also negatively affecting higher education. And then from there, we can see that um, these papers are beginning to stress the importance of valuing student development inside and outside of the classroom, which is also something that I think is very important. We see that they're also, the writers of the Hazen Report are actually able to use previous research done by other student affair practitioners to kind of, I guess, create more of a guide to explain how to properly create effective curriculum that is going to help the most amount of students. Um, so I think that the papers are, it's definitely very interesting to see how as time goes on, the papers kind of begin to not only reflect like the change in times, but also you see culture plays a very important part in it because when we discuss what colleges were like in 1968, I think the culture and current events play a big part in, part of it because back then you couldn't say you were a communist. You know, like we had the McCarthy, McCarthy trials, we had the fear of communism as a whole, you know, like that was a, just a completely different culture from what we're used to today. And their papers reflect that. And then we see in the later ones where we have technology introduced, where practitioners start to begin to understand that technology can be used as a tool to help students acquire education and something that should definitely be included in the cur curriculum because it's important for students to learn how to use electronics to learn, especially since because electronics are such an important part of American culture today. It's definitely a very essential part. Um, if I were responsible for updating the documents in 2024, I would include a guide for student affair professionals on supporting students with self-learning during another future global pandemic um, where all the learning must be done online. I think that this information is most important because it addresses our current challenges. We recently dealt with COVID-19 where a lot of learning was online. I know I personally began college in 2020 and I finished high school in 2020. So that was a very difficult time to be a student and I was two kinds of students. So I definitely understand the um, importance of student affairs practitioners understanding that yes, self-learning is a part of um, learning, but that doesn't mean that they are have nothing to do with it. I definitely believe that like student affair practitioners should be directly involved with online independent learning. Um, I believe that this ensures that students receive an education tailored to their experiences. Uh, so the culture of campus plays a crucial role in shaping academic institutions, which can result in sig significant differences between universities. This culture should influence student affairs to create an environment conductive, conducive to effective learning. Each campus has its own unique culture and teaching styles, which are based on different cultural backgrounds. This ensures the students receive an education tailored to their experiences. And I think students having an education tailored to their experience is incredibly important because the co different cultures are going to affect the way that students learn. 
Um, when studying different campuses, it's essential to consider the cultural factors that may influence the campus environment because it is going to be different. You know, the culture at Georgia Southern might be different from the culture at University of Georgia or um, University of North Georgia. It's going to be completely different. Um, also, the culture of campuses can be can vary based on factors like location, demographics, funding, and more. Um, each college has its own unique culture and the curriculum should be designed to, cult to be culturally relevant to each university. So I definitely think that culture is something that plays a very important role in student affairs planning and other many other aspects of education. Thank you.